Hello, welcome to this set of videos on just introduction to vectors. I'm going to treat you like you've never seen a vector before. I know many of you have. If you took a physics class, I need you to not unlearn what you already know. Just bear with me as I go through it. Uh, just learn a new notation and then it will get more difficult, I promise. <laughs> All right, what what is a vector? <laughs> well, <clears throat> we're so used to having um, a single variable where we just measure one quantity, right? Well, there are need, there's a need sometimes to be able to measure more than just that quantity. Maybe that quantity also has a direction associated with it. If you have um, displacement or, or, or velocity, then there's both a number that you tag to that, how far you moved it, how fast you're going. There's a number you tag to that but there's also a direction that you can tag to it. And so the, the number is gonna be called magnitude and then a direction is gonna be part of the mix as well. Okay, now there's a bigger picture. Um, definitely vectors fit inside a bigger world when it comes to mathematics. Um, when you get to math two, uh, you know, when you get to like linear algebra or something, you'll learn about vector spaces, but uh, that's theoretical right here in math one in this in this class here in multivariable calculus. What we're doing is uh, just introducing vectors so we can get to vector functions. Then eventually we'll get to vector calculus. All right. OK, so how are you going to represent these vectors? Well, a directed line segment, more commonly known as an arrow. All right. I have a point A. I have a point B. I'm going from A to B in space. The way I can write that is the first letter is where you're starting at. The second letter is where you're ending at. Where you're starting at is called your initial point. Where you're ending at is called your terminal point. And you put a little arrowhead above. But for the most part, we won't be doing that. We'll just use bold letters to represent vectors. Okay. V is the vector from A to B. Not tied down anywhere in space. Just here's a point A, here's a point B. That's the only way that it's tied down, that it's between these two points from A to B, different than the vector from B to A in general. All right, symbol for magnitude. Well, there's some debate. Okay, single bar, double bar. And so um, I learned double bar, but most texts have single bar, so I want you to be able to see them both. And so the thing about single bar is that that looks like absolute value. And so we have to be able to distinguish between the single bars having a vector inside and the single bars having a number inside. So, but just bear with me, you can do it. All right, so it's the magnitude and the direction which basically define the vector. Any vector that has this, any other vector that might have a different name at first, but has the same magnitude and the same direction, then those two vectors are the same. They are equivalent equal to each other. All right, great. What do you do with vectors? Well, we're going to first scale a vector. Okay, multiply a vector by a real number. Okay. Scalar multiplication. So let's call the real number C. Let's call the vector V. So now I have this possibly different vector called CV, CV, V is bold, C is not, C is a number, V is a vector, and what, what's, what's this new vector? It has a magnitude that is a multiple of the original magnitude. Uh, C could be negative, so we have to put these absolute value bars. See, that's a number on the inside, so those are absolute value bars. <laughs> um, C could be negative, so we put these absolute value bars to say what's the multiplier, how much <clears throat> has the magnitude been affected by? What did you multiply the magnitude by? Okay. Um, if C is a positive number, what will happen then is that uh, your, your new vector CV has the same direction as your original vector V. All right, you need pictures. There we go. So we have a vector V, and I like the vector that is double that, twice V. C, two is positive, so it's going to point in the same direction its magnitude will be multiplied by a factor of two. Okay, nothing special about two. We can do three halves. 
You see what happens when, when C is negative, though, it'll flip the direction. It's going to have the opposite direction. You know, you have an initial and a terminal. When you multiply by a negative scalar, they flip-flop, and your terminal becomes your initial, and your initial becomes your terminal. So if I have the vector V, then the vector negative V flips that terminal and initial swap. And we could have uh, the constant to be something that's smaller than 1 in absolute value, and it's going to look like you're shrinking the vector. So bigger than 1 looks like you're stretching the vector, bigger than 1 in absolute value, and then smaller than 1 looks like you're shrinking the vector. Scalar multiplication. So what we're talking about at first is just the general idea, okay, geometry behind the scenes. And on the next video, we'll look at the algebra, how you actually do it with, you know, with, when you tie it down in space to the origin and you get some basic numbers. Right now, just in general, there's two operations we're going to do on vectors. This is one of them, scaling the vector, okay? The more difficult operation to get a handle on, though, is adding two vectors. You have a vector v, you have a vector u, they're not tied down in space, they're just anywhere. And I like to add v and u together. How do I do that? Well, here's how. You should connect the terminal point of the first vector to the initial point of the second vector. Hmm. All right, sounds good. Black vector v, blue vector u, Terminal point of the black vector, initial point of the blue vector. Hey, good job. That's not the end of the story. It's just the start. All right. When connected in this way, all right, then the sum vector, V plus U, goes from the initial point of the first vector to the terminal point of the second vector. You've just added two vectors geometrically. Good job. All right, subtraction is not a mystery, okay? Subtraction is addition in disguise. When you are subtracting two vectors or one from another, what you're doing is not actually subtracting. We're going to call it the fact that you're adding the opposite. Okay, so I have my vector V, and I like to subtract U. So let me flip it, right? Negative, you know, the opposite points in the opposite direction. It, it flips the terminal and the initial. And now I'll add these two with the same manner. Attach the initial point of the first one. I'm sorry, attach the terminal point of the first one to the initial point of the second one. Complete the triangle by attaching the initial point of the first one to the terminal point of the second one. That's your subtraction vector. You did it. Not the best way to do it, but that is how it's done. All right, best way to do it is to draw a parallelogram. Okay, any two vectors define a parallelogram. You can put their initial points on top of each other, and then across there you have your terminal points on top of each other, and then, so make two copies of each vector, connect them, you'll have a parallelogram. And why do we do this? Well, one diagonal is the sum vector, and the other diagonal is the difference vector. Diagonals of the parallelogram. Coming out of the initials, going to the terminals, that's your sum vector. And then the other diagonal is your difference vector. Okay? All right, great. So we're looking at vectors geometrically. Uh, nine minutes into this video. Ah, let's go ahead and stop it. So in the next video, we'll look at doing this algebraically. All right. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, helping you through this multivariable calculus journey. Um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Comment down below or like and subscribe. All right. Take care.